Hello guys, in the previous lecture we calculated stress on an inclined plane which is inclined at an angle theta to the horizontal in case of a simple tension. We have this bar which is under simple tension. The normal stress is sigma and we wanted to calculate the stresses on the plane AC. Obviously on the plane AB it will have normal stress same as the stress sigma and we wanted to calculate the stress on this plane AC and we calculated that the sigma AC which is the normal stress on this plane came out to be sigma cos square theta and the shear stress on this plane which is tau AC came out to be sigma sin theta cos theta. The resultant of these stresses sigma R sigma R would be sigma square cos to the power 4 theta plus sigma square sin square theta cos square theta. So your sigma cos theta will come out of the root and you'll have cos square theta plus sine square theta which is actually equal to 1. So you'll have sigma cos theta. This is your resultant stress. If you see the value of sigma AC, it was sigma cos square theta. The maximum value will be at theta equal to 0. So the maximum normal stress will be on the plane which is at angle of 0 degree to the horizontal that means the plane AB itself will have the maximum normal stress and the value will obviously be equal to sigma AC at theta equal to 0 will be equal to sigma this is your maximum normal stress maximum normal stress now if you look at tau AC you can write tau AC as you can multiply and divide by 2 and you'll get half sine 2 theta because 2 sine theta cos theta is equal to sine 2 theta and the maximum value of this shear stress will come when this angle 2 theta becomes 90 degree then you'll have sorry there is sigma multiplied to it okay so this at theta equal to 45 this 2 theta will become 90 degree and hence you'll have the maximum shear stress as sigma by 2 so if you have a plane which is at an angle 45 degree to the horizontal so this plane AC will have shear stress value equal to sigma by 2 sorry it's sigma by 2 and the normal stress on this plane is sigma AC at an angle 45 degrees will be equal to sigma cos square 45 yeah, cos square 45 is 1 by 2 so this is equal to sigma by 2 okay so this normal stress is also sigma by 2 okay so the resultant will be sigma is equal to sigma by 2 whole square plus sigma by 2 whole square it's sigma by root 2 okay it's sigma square by 4 so it will be 2 sigma square by 4 sigma square by root 2 so it will be sigma by root 2 okay and the maximum resultant stress we have this resultant stress equal to sigma cos theta so the maximum resultant stress will occur at theta equal to 0 so the maximum stress or the maximum resultant stress is on the plane AB itself okay and by using these expressions you can find the resultant stress normal stress and shear stress on any plane which is at an angle theta to the plane AB so just like this we can have 
more cases of compound stress and strain we have this second case of pure shear in which we have a plane on which pure shear stress is acting and thus we have complementary shear stress for equilibrium reasons and we have a plane AC on which we have to find sigma and tau values this plane is at an angle theta to the horizontal so this is sigma theta and this tau theta we have to find the value of direct stress and the shear stress on this plane AC okay in the earlier problem of simple tension what we did was we used sigma fx equal to 0 summation fy equal to 0 where x and y axis were like this x was the horizontal axis y was the vertical axis and then we solve these two equations these were equations of in two variables and we got sigma ac value and tau ac value so we could do this in this problem also but i'm going to show you how to make these calculations much more easier we can take x axis parallel to tau theta and y axis parallel to sigma theta in order to make our calculations much more easier okay and apart from that we did multiply the sigma ac values from the areas on which these stresses are acting and what we saw was the areas were cancelling out from the equations so instead of using areas again what we can do is we can assume the area of this plane ac as 1 and thus the area of this plane ab will be cos theta and the area of this plane will be sin theta so this makes our life much more easier so now we'll do summation fx equal to 0 this is your x direction in the direction of tau theta so we'll have tau theta is the stress multiplied by the area which is equal to 1 and then we have this stress tau which will have a force component in the direction of tau theta let me represent these stresses as forces now this tau will be equal to tau cos theta as force and this tau will have tau sin sin theta as force because sin theta is the area of this plane bc and the area of this plane ab is cos theta now we have this angle theta so the component in the x direction of this force will be tau cos theta into cos theta it's in the same direction as tau theta so we'll have tau cos theta into cos theta then this force tau sin theta will have a component this angle will be 90 minus theta so this will be equal to and this is in the opposite direction of tau theta so it will be minus minus tau sin theta multiplied by cos of 90 minus theta which is eventually sin theta and this is equal to 0 so we have tau theta is equal to minus tau cos square theta plus tau sin square theta okay so this will be equal to minus tau cos square theta minus sin square theta which is minus tau cos 2 theta okay so we have tau theta value is equal to minus cos 2 theta okay now let's do summation fy is equal to 0 in the y direction we have the stress sigma theta multiplied by the area which is e1 and then we have this tau cos theta which will have a component in the downward direction in the minus y axis so it will be minus tau cos theta into sin theta 
then this tau sin theta will also have its component in the opposite direction of sigma theta so this will be minus tau sin theta and this will be sin 90 minus theta that is cos theta and this will be equal to 0 so sigma theta will be equal to tau 2 tau sin theta cos theta which is tau sin 2 theta so we have sigma theta as tau sin 2 theta and tau theta is minus tau cos 2 theta let me rewrite these We have sigma theta as tau sin 2 theta. We have tau theta is equal to minus tau cos 2 theta. And thus the resultant will be sigma theta square plus tau theta square which will be equal to tau square sin square 2 theta plus tau square cos square 2 theta. This tau will come out and this sin square 2 theta plus cos square t theta will be equal to 1. Now we'll have a look at these values. The value of sigma theta will be maximum for 2 theta equal to sigma theta is equal to sin 2 theta and we'll have the maximum value for 2 theta equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so theta equal to 45 degrees. So sigma theta will have a maximum value when it is at either plus 45 degrees or minus 45 degrees. Okay, so at these planes you'll have maximum value of sigma theta. These are maximum values which will be equal to tau itself. Okay. This will be minus tau. That means it will act in the opposite direction. So, at these planes, at theta equal to 45, let's see what value of tau theta comes. It will be minus tau cos of 90 degrees. Cos of 90 degrees is obviously 0. That means we have 0 shear stress on this plane. This means that if there are planes at right angles on which shear stresses are acting, on which pure shear stresses are acting, then the planes at an angle 45 degrees to those planes will have no shear stress and have the maximum normal stress. So that is it for now. We'll see more cases in the in the coming classes. Till then, bye.